Hello, I'm a nostalgia critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Remember when I said I didn't like the Flintstones cartoon? <laughs> Obviously you do. Well, there's another classic old cartoon that I also find I really can't stand. Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Obviously now it's big a backlash. He never did anything for me because it's basically just one joke. He can't see. The rest of the time, he just sort of smiles and looks happy, so there's no real comedic suffering on his part. Or even really that much to the people around him. He falls, he misses something, but he's always okay. Where's the comedy? How does that get a laugh? The only thing less funny than Mr. Magoo is giving him a ridiculous film budget to explain how unfunny he is. Ah! If you can't see what's wrong with this flick, then you're as nearsighted as this dumbass idea. You know the term, if it's not broken, don't fix it? Well, there was a term in the 90s that went, if it's broken, Disney's found a screenplay. This was during their especially bad run of horrible live-action movies. And trust me when I say this is certainly the topping flag of Shit Mountain. It was an age where ideas to make movies out of was at an all-time low... Well, almost all-time low. Let's stumble into Mr. Magoo. Wow, the first second, literally the first second of this film annoys me. Ah, there's only 5,492 to go. Good night, Mrs. Winterbottom. Ugliest hairdo I've ever seen. I guess it figures that we start off on the cartoon during the credits, but honestly, it's kind of distracting that while Leslie Nielsen stars as Magoo in the movie, he doesn't do his voice in the credits. I know it's a nitpick, but it just sort of emphasizes the direct side-by-side -side comparison of how much these two don't have in common. It's like if in a Popeye movie they start with a cartoon and the original voice, but then suddenly cut to someone completely different. Yo, I'm Popeye and shit. We do finally get the live-action version starring the late Leslie Nielsen, who's apparently a rich canned vegetable entrepreneur, god, there's so many, who donated a museum wing to a rare ruby. It's exquisite. No, actually it's corundum. What the hell is that woman wearing? Remind me who the nearsighted kook is in this movie? Her hat looks like a cartoon iris that got stuck halfway through. Yeah, what the fuck sauce? We see Magoo look around the museum while... Oh, uh, oh, he mistook something for something else. Well, let's hope that joke doesn't get old real quick. Oh my gosh. Would you look at that? And no, your eyes aren't as bad as his. That is, in fact, Jennifer Gardner. Pre-career, obviously. I am Stacy Sempana Hoditra. This is my nephew, Waldo. <laughs> Waldo Magoo. It is an honor. Oh god, what ethnicity do they have her mocking? With the vague accent, the weird hair, that Chinese Cracker Jack sailor suit? It's like the Quizak Hatterack of stereotypes. It insults all races at once. May all of the exhibits in this hall shine with the light of human knowledge. <laughs> he tries cutting the ribbon, but ends up cutting an electrical cord. And tell me if this scene looks more cutesy or horrifying. <laughs> What is this indoor fireworks? <laughs> and a dozen people were in critical condition. Charming eye joke has dark consequences. Public telephone. Oh, oh excuse me, sir. He confuses a mummy's tomb for a telephone booth, and the door closes in behind him. Later that night, we see a children's stage play version of Catwoman and Bane trying to break into the museum to steal the ruby. Luckily, she finds some Pee Wee's Playhouse dinosaurs to hide behind as she moves forward with the robbery. <laughs> By the way, you ever notice how bad movies have really poorly designed museums? Didn't Batman and Robin also have the same rare jewel slash dinosaur slash Egyptian art slash exotic plant life exhibit? A little clutter, don't you think? Magoo finally comes out of the tomb. Wait, he was in that box with the mummy for five hours? That's more than a vision problem, that's a mental psychosis. And the robbers get away by knocking the guard into the phony styrofoam exhibit. The next day we see that Garner is so distressed that she put on her distraught Tylenol hat and investigators come to look at the scene. Chuck Stupak, FBI. Gustav Andes, CIA. Ernie, no. God 
damn it, I'm sick of you showing up and shit! You're a good actor, you have style and class. Please tell me you're doing stage work somewhere, I'll gladly see it just to apologize for the fact that you're in this dick demon! The CIA has no jurisdiction on American soil. This could very well become an international incident. Not if you don't get in my way, fancy pants. Hmm. Oh no, 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 you did not just mm, Ernie Hudson! Okay, you say that for a Chris Tucker, not an Ernie Hudson! Hmm. Ernie, get up! <laughs> Meanwhile, we see the two robbers talk about last night's heist. There's nothing in the papers. It's a trap. They're trying to lull us into a false sense of security and then bust us when we make a careless move. That's yesterday's paper. That's right, folks. You just witnessed a film where they actually played the wah 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 music. Little known fact, the composer actually killed himself three minutes later after being forced to write that piece. She gets him to hand over the giant ring pop and kicks him off the boat. But he tries to take her down with him and the jewel falls into Magoo's boat, who just happened to be passing by. This guy is like an unfunny duo seeking missile. Blast your flitter jammer, you! They hope they can get back at the opera that night where Magoo is not only attending, but also... performing? Yeah, a little confusing seeing how we've never seen him sing and it's never explained whether or not he can sing. In fact, according to this movie, Mr. Magoo is well-rounded enough to be put in any situation at any location except what he actually does for a living. Yeah, his job allows him to do all this richy stuff, but we're never actually allowed to see what he does. He's said to be the canned vegetable king. Wouldn't it make sense to have him in a canned vegetable factory then? There's gotta be some comedic opportunities there. But no, fuck it, we got a castrated episode of Ice Spy to watch. Just spotted a conspicuous white male. Dirty clothes, needs haircut. Where? Look to your left. Oh snap! You just got HUD! <laughs> the lady thief disguises herself and tries to get an interview with him while the male thief is a little bit more direct. Just showing the audience what that does? No, okay. <laughs> but he can't get past his Loki horns and, big shock, he gets knocked out! Which causes him to accidentally turn on a giant fan. sensitivity of the singer's voices, it's a giant, loud, hard-to-control wind machine! Why don't all opera houses have this? The next day, he meets up with the thief, still thinking she's a reporter, and she tries to put the moves on him. True, Nella. Uh, uh, mm. <laughs> you know, this film is so dull and useless, I'm actually more interested in the backstory of the fish. Did he have a good life? Do you think his family appreciates what the sacrificing of his body is going to? Well, did you see what they did with Howard's body? Yes, yes I did. Please tell me he's at least being used to feed a poor starving family. No, he's... He's being used for a live action version of Mr. Magoo. <laughs> Warner Brothers or Disney? Disney. <laughs> we also get a little info about that thief as well. It's Luann Lesur. The Black Widow. She kills all of her male accomplices. No one has ever been able to finger her. What a shame. They die before they finger her? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Do you like that, Paul? Do you like that? Do you like that there, Paul? Do you like that? Hi, a kite. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will be right back with a Miss Penelope Cruz. Yes, has been in such movies as Vanilla Sky, Pirates of the Caribbean, on Stranger Tides, what the fuck am I doing? Back to the movie! We see Magoo's nephew is getting friendly with Garner as he takes her out to get her dressed as... Bozo the Clown's underwear. Your government thinks Mr. Magoo stole the Star of Kuristan. And you? Do you think he did it? Waldo, I need your help. 
every time I see her, I'm insulted. I just don't know who I'm insulted for. What's that country Balkia was from? Meepos? Yeah, I'm insulted for Meepos. <laughs> Finally, an ethnicity I can identify as being defaced. Just throw Jeff Dunham or Carlos Mencia in there and the trio of unfunny bad taste will be complete. So while everyone tries to break into his house and find the ruby, Magoo tries his best to rip off the Mr. Bean cooking scene. And now, lift both legs high to the air. Lift them left, and right, and left. Yeah, how long till he switches to the porno channel? Next, I want you to put your big long cock inside me. Well, okay, if it insists. <laughs> the chicken had a good life? Do you think his family appreciates what his body is being used for? Did you find Daniel's body? Yes. So, are they putting him to good use? Well, you see Disney- no! The male thief grabs the jewel and drives off, leaving the rest of them to drive a giant eggplant- I- I- d What?! Yeah, a giant eggplant! No, you didn't smoke anything, because that would mean I would have had to have smoked it too! This is the closest connection to his job that we ever get. Apparently it's part of an eggplant delivery service. Well, no wonder he's so friggin' rich. With fucking ingenious ideas like that, I'm surprised Steve Jobs never picked this guy up. Eggplant delivery service, they're fucking inspired. I haven't been this impressed with an idea since a patient at the mental ward asked me if I wanted to buy a clown. The thief gets away, but the woman convinces them that she's working for the FBI, and that she knows that the jewel's going to be auctioned off by a crime lord. Every billionaire gangster in the world is coming, except the most powerful of them all, Ortega Peru, the piranha. No one's ever seen him. He never goes anywhere. So if we could get someone to impersonate Peru, we could get close to the gem and recover it. But who? Well, gee, why not the blind man who's proven time and time again that he's a constant threat to anything and anyone he comes across? Yeah, I'm down with this. Mr. Peru never goes anywhere. That's right. I never go anywhere. So when I go somewhere, everyone thinks I am nowhere when I'm really there. So they're under the impression that mobster billionaires are bad Guido Sarducci impersonators? To be made a saint in the Catholic Church, you have to have four miracles. I understand that two of them was card tricks. And now we take a look at just who's running this so up Malcolm McDowell. God, I've seen this guy in so many of my reviews, I should just have a warm glass from the Corova milk bar waiting for him. When you've changed your clothes, these lovely ladies are waiting to serve you with chilled champagne in the solarium. Thank you. Ah! Apparently there was another scene in that woman's ass. Hey, if someone told me the rest of this movie came out of someone's behind, I'd believe it. Every time I kill a man, I tattoo his portrait on my body. I bet Peru's got some pretty nice tattoos. So Magoo takes the time to draw a tattoo real quick of... Okay, Joke, you have to be more clear if we're not gonna laugh at you. We can't make out what that is. Is it a drawing of the Alamo? A Spongebob spaceship? An explosion of pubic hair? Okay, movie, you're forcing me to look really close at wrinkly Leslie Nielsen chest. Not cool! Not cool! We're not on good terms right now! But the female thief comes in and steals it for herself. <laughs> The nephew will stop her. Good job there. Ah, oh, jeez, what is with this woman's wardrobe? A Power Ranger uniform has more dignity than that. It's as easy as fun. That's the wrong kind of board. Yeah! They have a little chase down the mountain in the middle of the women's snowboarding competition because I guess Disney finds it funnier when women are hurt. But she ends up getting away while the rest are left cold. Was it? Of course! I was frozen today! I have held my obligation. And if you can believe it, the film is still going. Really? I mean, you snuck into the hideout, you had the big chase. What's your motivation behind making more of this film? Do you think it's just punishment from the director? Like every time his kids act up, he'd say, Knock it off, or I'm adding another minute to Mr. Magoo! No! They find the thief in yet another disguise and try to figure out where she's heading to. 
Uh -huh. This receipt is for Brazil. Why would she go to Brazil? She's going to Peru. She'd go to Brazil to go to Peru? Exactly. But why? To get more for the ruby. Peru? Exactly. But then why go to Brazil? Peru is in Brazil. Peru is in Brazil. Just go there! Yeah, I'll put you on the fucking plane myself! Just go! So they finally get to the damn place where yet another crime lord looks to possess the ruby. Do you have the 15 million? Oh gee, was he hiding something in that suit? I couldn't tell. While that's going on, Makoto seems to come across the little people in bad costumes part of the house. Oh! <laughs> in the trivia, before Game of Thrones, this was actually Peter Dinklage's most famous role. He accidentally sneaks into the room of the bride who's about to get married, and yeah, you can all guess where this is going. Adios, sabare! Nueva nacho! It wouldn't last. I've never loved you! Did John McCain just bust my wedding? Out of the way! He escapes on a raft, but when you know it, it's just about to go over a waterfall. How the hell is he gonna get out of this? This opportunity will never happen again! You deliver! They get the jewel back, the nephew and the stereotype get together, we cut back to the shitty cartoon this was based off of, and get a load of this. We get a disclaimer at the end saying that the film was never meant to insult anyone with poor eyesight. First of all, if you're going to apologize to anyone, apologize to the audience who now have to cut their dicks off in order to feel something. Second, if you're going to say something to the visually impaired, don't write it in tiny lettering that they probably can't read! Mr. Magoo the cartoon isn't funny, Mr. Magoo the movie isn't funny, Mr. Magoo is not funny! It's poor slapstick with a shoddy script and characters that aren't even attempted to be made interesting. Once in a while there's a good stun, but when you put a painfully obnoxious cartoon sound effect over it, it loses all comedic value. I wish I was as blind as a bat, so I wouldn't have to see this stupid ass piece of shit! If you'll excuse me, I'm gonna do the worst thing I can think of, bludgeon an old blind man to death! I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it so you don't have to! It's time for another day of doing nothing at the canned vegetable factory. All right, you old bastard, you're gonna pay for that movie! Oh, what do we have here? Oh, looks like the Nostro Critic. Hey! What? Oh, no, didn't think I could see, did ya? I'm just playing it up for the handicap sticker in my car. <laughs> I can see everything. Perfect 2020 vision. <laughs> I can even see the blood as it spurts out your nose. <laughs> ah, there it is. Delicious, yummy blood. <laughs> Most people don't know that I'm actually quite a psychopath. They call me crazy, Mr. Nostril Critic. <laughs> but would a crazy man strangle an orphan girl because he thinks she's queen of the moon people? <gasps> yes! Yes, he would. <laughs> uh, what do we have here? Uh, it's a pitchfork with your ass's name on it. Here, let me give it back to you. Ah, you like that? No one has ever been able to finger her.